Well hello again and welcome to the VK6CS Amateur Radio Channel. Um, a few bits and pieces for people that are just entering Amateur Radio. So if you're looking for anything, uh, any advanced stuff, you're looking at the, uh, the wrong site, well for now anyway. So um, this is the cheapest way to get into Amateur Radio that I know of. It's a Bayo thing, UV5R. It's a uh, dual band. VHF, UHF, handheld, uh, portable radio, and uh, they're about $35 on the internet. So if you've just got your shiny new radio license, and you want to get into, uh, you want to buy some amateur radio equipment, um, the best thing you can do really is go out and buy one of these. Because if you find that you don't like um, uh, don't like listening to the local VHF and UHF repeaters, because you get the, the same old uh, the same old people on there day after day flapping their gums and um, I mean you might turn if you lived in Perth and you turned on and listened to the Rolling Stone two meter repeater you'd hear me uh, on there uh, fairly frequently flapping my gums and uh, you might think my goodness have I really spent 35 bucks to listen to this windbag and then go and drop your shiny new radio in the waste paper basket but at least if it's one of these it's only 300 uh, it's only 35 dollars that you're throwing in the bin not 350 um, Right, okay, so let's uh, assume you've got this, um, you've just got your new license and you've just got yourself a Baofeng UV5R and you've uh, just got it out of the box. First thing you do is put it in the charger and charge it up and uh, the charger's got a, an LED on it and um, when it's charging it's red and when it's charged the radio battery it's, it goes green and then you're good to go. So uh, you turn the radio on, this one is actually turned on and I'll just show you a couple of things that this uh, uh, couple of features on this before we get into the actual program here. We're going to I'm, I'm going to program a um, the local two meter repeater into it. So just to show you how to put something into a memory channel. Um, having read the instructions, so let's hope some of that sunk in. Right now on here, there's a little monitor button, and you can press that once, and you've got a nice high bright LED on the top. You can use it as a torch. You can press it again and it will work as a strobe. And you can press it again to turn the strobe off. That's all with this monitor button down here. And press and hold. I'll just turn the volume up a bit. And you see the green receive LED comes on here and you can hear the, uh, the receiver open squelch noise there. So that's, um, that's, that's quite useful. Um, this one here, if you just press it momentarily, it goes to the FM broadcast band. Um, possibly a good beach day. We're going to catch up. And uh, you can listen to FM radio stations. And press it again. It goes back to um, the ordinary to, um, VHF UHF communications mode. You can also use this if you were in an emergency situation and you could hear people nearby but you couldn't speak or something like that. If you press and hold this um, call button on the side here, it will. It will be uh, quite a nice little emergency beacon. That's it. <laughs> and I've just noticed actually that that um, uh, I didn't notice that before, but it actually goes uh, into transmit mode, so it will actually transmit that alert tone um, onto the uh, onto the frequency displayed. So um, you can actually program. A frequency in there that could be a, an emergency frequency or an alert frequency if you're with a group and you're, uh, you're you're out in the bush trekking or whatever and you can press that put it up as high as possible it makes a noise so anyone nearby can hear it if it's at night they can see the strobe and if they've got their radios on they'll hear that uh, alarm signal um, so that's uh, that's really quite good now as you can see at the moment the display is dark you can select this to be um, uh, the actual backlight for this display you can select it to be off or you can select it to come on uh, for a few seconds when you do something and um, you can select different colors I've chosen orange as, uh, as you'll see if I press the menu button and I've also enabled just for this demonstration the speaking on it uh, and I'll, I'll disable the speaking uh, once uh, once this is done. Okie dokie. Right now, um, I've got no crib notes here, so yeah, I'm probably going to stutter and stumble and leave things out. But uh, we'll give it a crack anyway. And if it looks any good, I'll I'll, I'll post it. 
Um, now, let's just have a look at the menu modes and the viewfinder in my camera has just gone dark for some reason. Menu. Okay, so menu mode zero is the squelch and um, it's set to one. If I, I think it's one to nine, you can adjust the squelch on this. Um, by the way, if you don't do anything with the menu, once you put it in menu mode, after about five seconds, it will revert back to either VFO mode or memory mode, whatever you've got set there. Okay, so now it says squelch. If I want to change that, I press menu again. Squelch. So the little black arrowhead goes down there, and there's the squelch level. At the moment it's set to 1. Um, I'll set it to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and, and 0, and then back to 1, because um, yeah, I'm happy with the squelch level of 1. 1 means um, the squelch threshold will open on fairly weak signals, and 9 or 0 will mean that it's, um, it requires quite a decent uh, strength signal to, to open it up. OK, so we go to the next one, uh, which is the step. This is what you'll need to program. And um, again, press menu. Frequency step. And the black arrow head goes down to the bottom there, and I can change the frequency step. So 20K, 12.5, 10. I'll make it 25. And then hit menu again. Um, because when you hit menu again, menu is also the enter button. So you select the menu item, then you select the, the value, then you hit menu again, and it then stores that uh, the value you've set because it's also it's also the enter button. Okay, so let's go back to the menu, menu. and we'll go transmit power. I've got it set to high again. If you want it set to low, so if you're if you're prepping and you're out uh, you're out in the bush and uh, you're in a survival situation, obviously you're going to want your radio to last as long as possible. So you would set that to menu. low. Set the transmit power to low to conserve your battery, and you might want to turn the uh, turn the display off altogether. Um, certainly, having the display set to orange would probably be good for prepping as well, because it's good for uh, night vision. Um, you know, if you're hiding in a shrub at night, the orange light is okay for your eyes. You won't lose your night vision, and um, also um, the other display colours might be a little bit bright. You know, if someone's actually looking for you, someone's scanning the shrubs with a uh, with a high power rifle with a gun sight on it with a scope on it um, you certainly don't want to be giving out any light um, so menu. Um, menu and then press Power. that again the arrowhead, arrowhead goes down there and I'll set that to low and then back to high because I'm not I'm not I'm going to be hiding in any shrubs so I'll keep it to high because I'm going to have my charger handy right Confirm. now um, don't worry about uh, menu item 3 this, you don't need that to get you on the air or menu item 4 which is the Vox you want that off unless you want the world and his wife to know uh, what you're thinking um, wide or narrow WN which is menu item 5 and you want that set Channel bandwidth. yes you want that set to so you've got narrow or wide you want it set to wide if you set it to narrow your radio will sound a little bit quiet Okay, so press menu again to get the black arrow head up to the actual menu item there, and then I can go to the next one. ABR, don't know what that is, but you don't need it to get on the air. TDR is off. Now that's um, DR, that's dual receive. So I'll just let that go back to the main display, and you can see there's two different frequencies here. Now, by pressing this A and B button, I can toggle between the top one or the bottom one, you know, if I want to monitor either of those frequencies or use either of those frequencies. When you have TDR on, it will automatically um, go to whichever one of these it hears something on. So it's dual receive. So if you're out and about and you've got two groups of people out there and they're using different channels, you can program those channels into that and it'll monitor both. Uh, like you, you could be again if you're in a prepper situation, you could be the control. You've got two groups out there on different channels, and whoever calls you, you're on. The, if one group calls you on one channel, you'll they'll, you'll hear them, and uh, another group calls you on another channel, you'll still hear them, but you don't have to manually select the channel. I found this to be a bit of a pain in the backside, to be honest, so I've turned it off. But um, under different circumstances, this would probably be very useful. And again, you know, for $35. It's amazing, really. Amazing value, this thing. Menu. Uh, right, OK, so that's the TDR. 
that's a dual receive. Um, I've got beep off because I'm not really interested in playing astronauts. I suppose, you know, um, all that does is, um, oh, actually, no, that's not the Roger beep. That's the beep if, uh, for the button beep, you know. So every time I press the button, actually, let's just show you that. So I press menu beep again. On. So I'll put that to on and then enter that. And then every time I press a button, I get that that beep. So that's what that's what that does. I think that's quite annoying. So I'm going to I'm going to get that um, turned back off again. So now I can press the buttons and um, they'll be quiet. Timeout timer T O T menu item number nine. Now, sorry I'm shaking a bit here, but I'm in a really weird position because I'm having to reach around the camera standing on a tripod. Um, I'm going to get cramp in a minute. Ah, cool, 60 minutes. Now, menu. right, so menu item number nine, just looking at the time, 11 minutes. Got to be careful here because this camera automatically stops recording after 20 minutes and I've looked through the menu and I can't figure out how to change that. That's on the camera, not on the radio. Right, so. Menu. Now, menu item nine, TOT, time out timer. That is the amount of time you've got between you pushing the PTT and the radio automatically uh, dropping the transmitter off. I think out of the box it comes set to 120, 120 seconds, which is two minutes. Now, as I've said previously, and many, many local hams will attest, I am a bit of a windbag, so I've set mine to 600 seconds. So I've set mine to 10 minutes, so I can... Menu. So I can have one of my typical overs and uh, completely flatten the battery one over and the radio uh, won't mind at all. It'll just work until it dies. It'll, it'll, work, it'll run for 10 minutes, sorry. <laughs> okay, now 600 uh, seconds is the most you can set it for, by the way. Okay. Um, now, menu item number 10 is receive digital controlled squelch. I've got that turned off. So unless you're interested in um, if you're using something with a digitally uh, coded squelch. Um, don't worry about that. If you're just getting on the air, you've just got this out of the box, you're going on two meters to an analog repeater, you don't need to worry about that at all. Menu. Um, what's the next one? Receive CTCS. Now that should be CTCSS, but they've run out of space on the display. So CTCSS stands for Continuous Tone Controlled Squelch System. And some uh, some repeaters, um, see with this off, you'll hear anything that's going on on a given frequency. Now, some amateur repeaters actually transmit a, a subtone. Um, in Perth, we have uh, one of the two meter repeaters transmits a subtone because there's a lot of pager noise in the city and what have you. And as long as the, the repeater is transmitting a subtone, you can set your tone squelch up with this. Um, so I could say, yes, OK. Uh, uh, I've got to press that to get the arrowhead down there. And once I've done that, I can put in my tone. And once I've done that, um, that receiver won't open. Confirm. That, re that receiver won't open until it sees that given tone. So if you're driving around in the city, there's a lot of pager noise or something like that, that could be useful in uh, eliminating that noise. So you can just monitor that repeater uh, frequency. Um, most of the repeaters don't transmit tones and um, most of the time Menu. you wouldn't worry about that at all. So CTCSS on receive is uh, off. So then you go to transmit digital controlled squelch, again off because that's not a function you're going to be interested in just to get you on the air, that's for um, uh, using a uh, digital coded uh, squelch, again it's uh, not Menu. something you're going to need to worry about. And that's menu 12. Um, now, menu item number 13 is transmit CTCS, and at the moment that's off. And menu. what this does is a lot of amateur radio repeaters do require a tone to be transmitted, an audible subtone, a subaudible tone rather, to be transmitted to open the repeater receiver up. Um, I think most of the ones in Perth don't. There might be one UHF one that needs a subtone. But um, generally speaking, tr transmit CTC SS will be off. Um, if, if your local repeater says it requires 123 hertz tone, you would press menu again to get the arrowhead down to the bottom line there, and then you would just change it. So if I go like that. There you go, one, two, three hertz, which I think is the local uh, UHF repeater requires a 123 hertz tone. And if I go like that, 
So now whenever I go on the, whenever I press the PTT, it will transmit a sub-audible tone of 123 hertz. Best idea is to have that off um, because they do, uh, some, some of the repeaters do have special functions on them and if uh, they see a subtone, they'll mute your audio. So TC, CTCS, T, CTCS off, okay? Um, right, now what do we got next? I uh, don't quite know what that is. Um, ANI just sends a numeric code if you select it and you'll put the numbers in to say what numeric code that is. So if you had a little network and you were doing it, uh, you could call someone just by putting a number on the keypad and their radio would alert them that you wanted to talk to them. Um, again, that's a that's a more advanced function. You don't you don't need to get it on the air. Uh, certainly don't need it to talk on two meter repeaters. Uh, same with this one, DTMF, dual tone, multi-frequency, um, dual tone and ANI, uh, automatic number indicator. Don't need any of that just to get you on the air. Uh, it's comp it's uh, just a function you don't need. Um, S code, not sure what that is, but you don't need to worry about it because I haven't and mine works. Um, SC rev, no. PTT ID off. That's a menu item 19, don't worry about that one. Uh, that's 20, don't worry about that one. MDFA, and that's 21 and 22. That's just. Um, uh, now, I know you can't actually write names in here with, unless you do it on a computer, but it's got something to do with it. You might be able to call the channel something in, a, in some sort of limited way. I haven't actually tried that one, but again, to get you on the air, you don't really need that. Uh, BCL, don't know what that is, um, but um, you don't need it. Auto, auto LK, I'm not quite sure what that is. This one you do need to know about if you're thinking about using um, repeaters. SFTD, excuse me. Menu. Now, um, I've got, uh, this is the repeater shift, and you are going to need to set this, whether it's plus or minus, or whether it's off. So when you press the PTT, do you want uh, to shift the transmit frequency up? Do you want to shift it down or do you want to leave it where it is? And by pressing menu again, the arrowhead's gone down to there. And I can now, by using these buttons here, the up and down arrowheads, I can select positive off offset transmit, um, no offset at all, so it's just going to be simplex, or um, a negative offset. That parameter will be stored in the memory when we, when we actually put this into a memory. Now um, I'll leave that as a, as a negative offset because that's the one we want. And this is the this is menu item number 26, which is the amount of offset. Now here we use a 600 kilohertz offset. Menu. So offset frequency. So you can see zero megahertz, 0.6. Okay, so that's 600 kilohertz is the is the repeater offset. Uh, 610. 20, 30, 40, and uh, yeah, I'll just change it back to 600 again and enter. Confirm. Okay, so I've got my 600 kilohertz offset. Um, and if I want to write that into a memory channel, um, menu item number 27 is the menu, menu. Uh, is the memory uh, uh, access. Um, option so it's um, menu item 27 menu. and you can go press menu memory. again the arrowhead goes down to the bottom and we're looking at 075 now that's just uh, memory position 075 there's we can tell there's nothing in it Receiving memory. Oops. Memory channel. <laughs> we can see there's nothing in it because it doesn't say channel in front of it okay so as you can see 75 has got channel in front of it, 74 hasn't because it doesn't have anything programmed into it. And uh, I'll show you how to program something into it in, uh, in part two. Thanks very much for watching.